that. Let's go. Let's go. I guess I'll just start just the, yep. the idea of reconnecting with wow. Coach Knowles, how, how enticing is that when, when they job opened and, and that whole process started? Yeah, great opportunity. I mean, Jim Knowles and I have been together from uh, working camp at Duke in 2012, you know, so that relationship's really strong. Uh, whether we're working together or not, we talk a lot. And, uh, yeah, so the opportunity to get back in was getting back with family, so it was great. With such a safety-driven defense, mm -hmm. I imagine, the familiarity you guys have will help that transition. Yeah, for sure. I think we're probably one step ahead of most, you know, coordinator connections to a position coach from a standpoint of knowing what's coming and being able to build a lot of things together from a system standpoint. So, yeah, it's, it's been great. Matt, what was it like getting here again and then the Keel Downs commitment? Just was that a whirlwind to start kind of your second tour here? Yeah, I mean, I guess the transition back was unique. Not a lot of times in college football do you go back to a place that you were, you know, so you can have the same realtor, you can have, a, you know, your wife living in the same area, that kind of stuff is, is awesome. Um, but yeah, to be able to get Caleb here was fantastic and he hit the ground running. I came here that Wednesday night, got here, had a team meeting Thursday morning, hit the road recruiting. So uh, it's been fast paced, but that's how it should be. Yeah, I know you know some of the guys in the safety room already. Lathan comes to mind first. And how is he doing, first of all, from his recovery standpoint? And what's it like being with some of those guys? Here? Yeah, it's been great. Again, familiarity, you know, to be able to know guys, uh, know about their families. They know you and, and your story and be able to have real authentic relationships. I think that helps. You know, it starts with that. Um, if not, you're putting in a lot, a lot of work to just to get to know somebody. And, and obviously a lot of that is still happening with new faces and things from there. But, yeah, Lathan's doing great. He's a guy who's a, the heartbeat of that room. And, um, has been through hardship before and continues to battle back. He's a warrior. Coach, can you talk about <clears throat> your relationship with Coach Knowles? What yeah. What guys have, I don't know, the synergy that you have? Yeah, for sure. It's family. And, uh, yeah, knowing Jim from uh, the time I was I was a little D2 coach back in the day when I first started coaching, and uh, Jim was defense coordinator at Duke. And to be able to start that relationship and then be able to coach safeties and, and take over his his defense and calling it in that system. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about real relationships in, in any business. And uh, to be able to have a close one with him has, has definitely been awesome. How'd the Indiana experience uh, help you? Yeah, it was great. Um, again, to be able to see the Big Ten from a different lens, you know, I think that's valuable to be able to do that. Uh, Tom Allen was great to be able to work for and learn from a strong defensive coach and learn his system. Uh, so I think there's a lot of value from that standpoint. And then, um, yeah, you learn and you're able to apply. So some ideas that maybe you didn't know before and some that you can enhance that were already, you know, in a system. Uh, so it was great to be able to learn from him and, and be able to call plays in the Big Ten. I assume Sonny's position is still being evaluated for right? mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do you think, I, I guess, what's the push and pull there between, you know, looking at him at safety or knowing that that's going to be the best position for him or maybe it's somewhere else? Or, and, and how are you evaluating that? Yeah, I, I think it starts with a dynamic – playmaker you guys have been able to see that on plenty of Saturdays here from the time that he first came in here was a had a starting role in that Georgia game his first year you know so uh, Sonny's dynamic in what he could do he's a unique combination of ability to run cover tackle mentality size I mean he's got a lot of things and, and attributes from there um, so yeah without getting into specifics I mean we're going to take a look at a, a number of different things for him and put him in the best position for him to be successful and the team to be successful just taking a look at a number of different things I mean he'll play some linebacker, play some safety, or is that still too Yeah, I'll let Jim be able to answer all that kind of stuff from a system standpoint, you know, with schematics and things like that. Um, but obviously he's got a lot of skills to be able to do a bunch of stuff. If, if he does play linebacker, what do you think about just sort of the number of pieces you would have left, obviously, to, to potentially lose or not have somebody like Sonny in the safety position? He's from your position, I would imagine you want to have him, but what do you feel about the rest of the, the room if, if that is the way Yeah, I've been impressed with the depth across the board. I think that uh, there's guys that have played big roles. Obviously, Caleb wasn't here but is here you've got Malik Hartford who you know started games as a true freshman there's there's great depth I think across positions on the defense here it's our job as recruiters to be able to build that and uh yeah Jim will get in this in the specifics of schematics and, and things like that from you know from there but yeah really excited about the playmaking ability of a number of guys on the defense Matt a guy like Caleb I mean you don't typically see true freshmen hit the ground running like yeah. that to produce that way well when you study him what sets him apart what's made him so good at such a young age yeah I think when you look at safeties is how fast can guys react and there's two ways you do that one is mentally so you guys have met with him already and you see how sharp he is the way he can answer questions articulate I mean he's really special from a mental standpoint and then how fast you can react physically so if you watch him in agility drills his body the functional movement skills are tremendous of him so if you have a guy that can 
can respond quickly from a mental and a physical standpoint, I think you're a step up on guys from, from that standpoint. So not only does he have great physical schools, but he can use those in a really efficient way. It seems like everybody's going to have physical attributes to play at this level. So is mental more important? I think from, from an early standpoint, if you said, okay, what's the most important thing for a young player coming into a program like Ohio State to be able to contribute, it's what's between the ears. It's the mentality. It's it's the way that they can process the game. So that's our job as coaches to take the physical school skills and be able to get them to that point. But as a freshman to be able to do that's really impressive. Yeah, so um, my title was analyst, which I've never been in one of those spots before off the field. Um, but yeah, Jim wanted me to be able to come here and help you know, install the defense with him and transition, you know, with him from that standpoint. So I've been one of his DB guys, you know, all along. And I think my job was to help, you know, get guys up to speed with what the defense was and what the system was, you know, and then be able to, you know, be able to tailor that to Ohio State's version of that. Yeah, I think it's uh, efficiency first, you know what I mean, to be able to be on the same page. Um, and then I think also knowing what it came from helps too, right? If you know the history of something, then the, you can tweak the end product in a way that, hey, we've done this before, right? ah, we dabbled with that and didn't really work, you know, that, that type of stuff. So I think to, to be able to have that history and uh, experience with him will go a long way. Matt, from that first year, you're going to help me install. Like, Jim is obviously not a coach who's going to sit and say, this is what I'm doing year after year after year. Yep. Changes things. How have you seen? Him evolve as a coordinator and the defense evolve. Yeah, it's what makes him the best in the country. He's able to adapt. You know, some guys have a great defense, no more defense in the country, and then it stays the same for a number of years, and people start to catch up with him a little bit, right? It's hard to hard to get a beat on him, you know. And uh, he spends a ton of time. He's probably sitting in his office right now studying what the next move is, you know. So I would say that what makes him special is the way that he can teach and be able to take a system and be able to make it very functional for the guys. Um, but yeah, his ability to adapt, you know, to ability to change. There was a lot made last year of uh, he wasn't being overly aggressive, you know, kind of just wanted to keep everything safe and give, stop giving up big plays, and the defense really helped. For sure. How much did you see that transition? Um, how much did you see that? How much is that a growth step from what you could be? Yeah, I think it goes to what does it take to win? Right, and that's when you look at okay, hey, that's what the bottom line is: is winning games, right, and be able to win it all here and accomplish the goals that we have. Um, so I think for him, it was okay. He's a lot of times in his career been a really aggressive guy to dictate on defense and, and force offenses' hand, um, where maybe he saw that okay, hey, what's the prevention of explosives and the trade off for creating a negative versus keeping the ball in front and inside? And um, I'm sure that'll continue to adapt over time. You mentioned Nathan's doing great. Does that mean he's good to go for spring? Yeah, he's he's doing a great job from that standpoint. Yeah, so um, yeah, the trainers have the exact timeline with with that. But yeah, he's been great in workouts, leadership. I mean, he's been fantastic. Is Jordan with you or is Jordan with Tim? Yeah, so we're, we do a bunch of stuff together, you know, to all make sure we're on the same page. Um, but that position, yeah, Jordan comes out of you know obviously the, the corner pool of guys from Tim's room. But yeah, we do we do things together to make sure everybody's on the same page in the secondary, which I think is important. And then from what you've seen of this defense, all of it, mm -hmm. what is the potential of this, th this defense this year? Do you think? Yeah, there's no limit on it. I mean, you've got uh, great pieces from the the front to the middle of it to the back end of it, you know. And it's on us as coaches to be able to put those pieces in place to accomplish our goals. What kind of enticement is that for? assistant coach it's great I mean to be able to have everything right in front of you you know I mean there's I tell it all the time to recruits as a player you there's nothing that you long for here at Ohio State you get it all right in front of you as a coach the same thing everything that you ever dreamt of or you wanted you've got right here and it's our job to take advantage of that you talked about the time in Indiana mm -hmm. what does that bring back here this is Jim's defense obviously but what can you maybe tweak add give him ideas on that you've done somewhere else under some of your yeah for sure I think um yeah, there are parts of systems that you like, and you say, okay, hey, this worked really well. Obviously, you stay familiar with the Big Ten. I know the divisions aren't, aren't the same, but uh, you stay familiar with the Big Ten. And I think uh, something that's unique, and you know, Jim's been this way throughout his career too, but being at a Duke or an Indiana, those developmental programs, right? That's different than Ohio State being here a couple of years ago. So uh, if you're able to take the development piece of those places and continue to apply that, I think you could have a really good product, which obviously Ohio State has had year in and year out. How much have they discussed it? Coach Day mentioned the possibility of if you being involved with special teams, you're having those responsibilities. Have they ironed out what you like? Yeah, I mean, I'll be, in, I'll be involved in that. You know, I think that'll be a work in progress as we go. But, yeah, we, we've had a preliminary conversations from that standpoint, too. Any specific area? Uh, not right now, but that's, you know, I'll let Coach Day be able to touch on that from, you know, exactly his plans from there. What do you, have you 
previously worked in special teams area before? I have, yeah. Um, I've been hands-on with teams every stop that I've been. Even when I've been a coordinator, you know, I would have certain responsibilities within teams, so I've been very familiar with them. I'm passionate about it. I think the, the best players should be impact guys on special teams as well. And at this point, you have a lot of deep coordinator experience. Uh, why go back to just a position group role at West Ohio State rather than looking around for maybe a, a defensive coordinator position? This is the best place in the country. You get a chance to be at Ohio State. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. It's, this is home to me. Um, working with the best coordinator in the country, Jim Knowles. Working for the best head coach in the country, Ryan Day. This is this place is everything that you ever ever dreamt of. So to be able to be here and work with the young men on a daily, this is a, a special opportunity. They hold recruiting here at the highest standard. Oh, yeah. How would you describe yourself as a recruiter? And can you uphold that standard? I guess. Yeah, for sure. I think it starts with relationships, real authentic relationships. You know, I think there's a lot of flash of different things that happen from a recruiting standpoint um but it's about building real authentic relationships you know your job as a coach the old stage coach right is it took someone from where they were to a desired destination it starts in the recruiting process are you able to build authentic relationships and trust and be able to take that young man who's a freshman or sophomore in high school and be able to over time get them to where they want to be able to be and obviously in turn ohio state gets to where they want to be able to be so i think real authentic relationships is where it starts how willing would you be as a safeties coach to allow one of your safeties to go be uh, the punt returner this year, like uh, Caleb Downs? Absolutely. When NFL scouts come in, right? What's 53-man roster? You better be able to play on teams, right? So um, there's no doubt that the safeties better be involved in special teams. Is there a concern Caleb can't make a 53-man roster down the line? <laughs> that, that's on him. That's on him to go prove. Yep. Uh, you mentioned relationships. Mm -hmm. What's it been like? Kind of getting back to with, with Tim Walton, and you talked about how you guys yeah. are, are working closely together. What's that relationship? Yeah, the OG, as we call him in the building <laughs> and, and publicly. Um, he's great. He's the best secondary coach in college football. He's a guy that's played at the highest level at Ohio State, that's coached at the highest levels in college mm -hmm. and in the pros, been a coordinator in college and in the pros. You know, so when you start talking about, you see what he's able to do recruiting wise and the development here, right? So um, he's one of those guys that. There's not a box that he doesn't check. I mean, he, he checks every single box. So from me, from a guy to be able to work hand-in-hand -hand with him, what a great honor and opportunity. Obviously, you were here the first year when you know, Jim Knowles was here. And now seeing it in his scheme in its third year with a lot of players who have been in the system for all three years, how are the conversations different that you're having with guys like Lathan about him? From the yeah, I think it's different when you put the film on. When he first came here, it was Oklahoma State film, right? Now it's two years of Ohio State film. So when you start talking about – what does it look like? These guys are watching themselves on film. And it makes a big difference when you say, okay, what does it look like for those guys? And then what's the application to the Big Ten, right? It changes based on when when Jim was in the ACC or the Big 12 or the Big Ten. That changes over time. You've seen his defense morph to be able to match the conference and to be able to win those matchup games. How have you seen the defense morph to match the conference? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that's unique about the, you know, if you took the Big 12 when he first came in versus the Big Ten is the Big 12 was, uh, guys trying to score a touchdown every single play, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't happen in the Big Ten, but you've got a lot more uh, heavy sets and different things in the Big Ten to be able to, um, you know, go the distance throughout the season regardless of what the weather says or things like that, you know? So, um, yeah, each each league's a little bit different, and uh, I think he's done a great job, obviously, adapting. To right. hit the ground running like you did where you, you're here on Wednesday and Thursday you're going down to see Caleb yep. Downs, what was that 24, 48-hour first period like where you Court of recruiting is really fast and having to meet somebody like Caleb, what was that whole process like? Yeah, you know what you know the stakes are when you take the job, you know, and you're ready to go no matter what it is. You know, so you get a call that, hey, this is happening at Ohio State, you pack your bags, you kiss you, my two sons and wife, see you later, they're back in Bloomington right now, and you, you come here and you go, you know. So um, no matter what the job is, when you get uh, the orders to be able to do it, it's your job to be able to go get it done, you know. So um, an exciting time and a, and a lot of fun. So what was, had you met Caleb? Because he, he had been recruited mm -hmm. by Heisman. So was that the first time you had met him? I've met him before. I've met him before. Did that help at all in terms of recruiting? I think, I think relationships, period, help. You know what I mean? To be able to, whether it's just a handshake or it's to be able to, you know, have a deep relationship from there, I think that, that definitely helped, especially when things were sped up from, from that standpoint. But obviously Tim's relationship with, with him and family was critically important. Yeah, when you talk about players having more familiarity with Jim Nanos and the system, obviously that's a benefit. How long does it take Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, I think there's a learning curve for the coaches, just like there's a learning curve from the players. I remember feeling that way, you know, early on. And, um, yeah, so I think that benefits from there. He's a great teacher regardless, right? So, I mean, whether it was, a, you know, any staff or um, players, he could get anybody caught up to speed from that standpoint. But do I think that's a help? Sure, I think that's a benefit to be able to know a system adaptations over time and kind of how we got to where we are. When did you feel that Tipper Cooper be able to coach it the way he wants to coach it? Yeah, I, uh, 
I would say the first, so my, my first uh, year, I was actually working with linebackers at Duke. He was the safeties coach at the time. And um, I took over safeties for him. So he was a walk around coordinator. So anytime you're taking over somebody's position, you better be on point with that. So I would say after that first spring, you know, feeling good about what the expectation was and what he wanted it to look like from that standpoint. Yeah. Matt, kind of, kind of off that, like you mentioned, obviously, transition is pretty easy now. But from this this experience coming here with the defense you've helped install that you already know to maybe even going to Indiana or just going somewhere else where you had to learn from scratch. Yeah. How is what? How is that process different? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I think uh, yeah, if you're learning from scratch, that's a lot of hours by yourself at night. You know, not even you're studying for a test. Okay, I know this. All right, I got it, and I can apply it. Because to, to teach it, you better really, really know it. You know, if I said I pride myself on doing anything, it's teaching, right? So um, you better really know that, like, the back of your hand, you know? And so that was a lot of hours. You know, when guys are going home and hanging with their families, you know, you're not, you know? And, um, yeah, so no matter what the job is, I think there's different challenges every single place. You put the work in to be a master of your craft and to be able to apply it. So is it when you're here and you can get into team meetings and just like, okay, I know this, now I need to apply what change and then maybe get the ball. Yeah, or terminology. There may be something that you say, okay, hey, this is the concept that I'm familiar with, but the terminology change, right? So then you learn the top terminology so you can speak the language, you know, from that standpoint. But it's not, uh, wow, wholesale different than what you know, you know, from that standpoint. Matt, with the idea of iron sharpening iron, what kind of iron is it for a defensive coach to be combating or working against Ryan Day and Chip Kelly as offensive guys? Yeah, it's an elite challenge, you know, and task. Um, I thought that from the first time coming, like that first spring ball to line up across and uh, here's C.J. Stroud and Marvin Harrison, right? And Jack's in the slot and, okay, you better get good fast, right? If not, you're going to get embarrassed on the practice field, you know, and I think that's one of the things that Coach Knowles talks about a lot is the development from a mentality standpoint of the defense of competing every single day. Like, it doesn't matter who's across from you, you know, and I think that helped us take great strides on defense. What has been your impression of James, who he is as a coach? What have you, what have you kind of taken away? Yeah, obviously knew what, you know, a lot about him as a player. Um, unbelievable person, first and foremost, you know, just be able to, to come back and get to know him. I heard great things from afar of, you know, guys in the building here. And then, uh, but yeah, I've been really impressed with his knowledge base. And we talk about a guy that's won every major trophy from a defensive standpoint here, all-time leading tackler of an NFL franchise. Those skills translate well to being able to relate to guys. He's done it before. He's coached the highest level. So, yeah, the, the sky's the limit. Is there a level of comfort that you have? Just because, I mean, you knew everybody in the building already. Yep. I mean, uh, most of the guys, even the new guys, you probably helped recruit a year ago. Mm-hmm. So is there just a level of comfort you have? But if you're not necessarily starting from square one with any of the guys. Yeah, I think, I think it helps from them, you know, from that standpoint. Um, now, it doesn't mean that your relationship's like that, though, immediately, right? You know what I mean? You still have to put the work in. So you could be a handshake, hey, I know who you are. I remember you from this process or that type of stuff. But have you really put the work in to get to that point of, like, real authentic trust? You know, that's a different level, right? So um, you still got to put that work in from that standpoint. So I have not assumed anything. Even with Lathan, who I've had a really tight relationship with for a long time, you, you don't assume anything, you know? So it's back to square one and be able to build, you know, real authentic relationship. You've been plenty of places and been recruiting. What's the difference – recruiting now at Ohio State when you're yeah. walking to a school or a home? Yeah, for sure. I think the, the the first thing is you have access to everybody in the country, right? So other places you don't have access to, to that level of, of player, of person, of recruit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, here it's you have a lot to sell as well, right? When you talk about the block O and the things that have been represented over time and then, you know, current tradition and history, I mean, I think it's really special, the combination of those things from that standpoint. And then... Does it make it harder, make it easier in terms of there's more pressure, but is there more pressure because the pool is bigger? Yeah, I think I think every place has different challenges, right? I mean, you're, the the guy that you're recruiting um, at Ohio State is the elite of the elite, and uh, the challenge is getting that recruit to Ohio State, right? It's the, the closing of that and showing that recruit why Ohio State's the best place in America for him as a person, as a student, and as a football player, you know? So uh, we have everything here, and then it's – still goes back to relationships, right? To be able to build real authentic relationships and trust and show them, hey, short term and long term, here's an individualized plan for you to be successful. So it's been awesome from that standpoint. I can't say enough positive things. Matt, you mentioned that Jim was a he was just coordinator at that point, right? Yep. What's is there a difference between Jim Knowles strictly a coordinator or Jim Knowles position coach anchor? Um I imagine he loves just being able to sit and watch film like nothing else. Yeah, I mean I think that he's going to be really involved with the players regardless, you know. So if he's coaching a position, there's more time with that position. When he was a walk-around coordinator in my past, you know, 
with him, uh, he had more time to spend with other position groups. You know what I mean? So in indie period, he might be over with the corners, the safeties. Or, hey, we're putting together this blitz pan plan, and he's with the front from that standpoint. You know, so I think it frees him up a little bit to be able to do what he wants to be able to do. Um, but I think he's great regardless. He's going to put the time into to know the guys. Matt, you talked about um, you talked about your relationship with Tim Walton and Jim Lawrence. With this defensive coaching staff, where do you feel, you're obviously a ways away from playing a game, but where do you feel kind of the chemistry in line is with the defensive coaching staff? I think it's really close. You know, I think we, we talked about that a week ago, sitting in meetings together about, hey, this being a, a group of guys that are on the same page and same wavelength, and our job is to get the best out of the players. And, but I think you have, you've got real relationships in there. I know I've mentioned that a lot, but I think it gets, it gets back to that. Um, so guys can speak freely in there. You know, I think when you first put in a system, guys are just getting to know each other, uh, you know, you're just learning. You're not saying, ah, oh, well, how about this idea or that type of stuff. Now it's to you know, guys know a system and you're able to bring up different ideas and share and challenge each other. You know, so I think that's unique to be able to do that. You said Indiana is a developmental program. Mm -hmm. How does going from something like that to here, how do you take that developmental idea and still apply it here? Because that's still important here. Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah, this is the, the leader in development of the country, right? I mean, shoot, it says it's developed here across the wall, right? <laughs> the difference is what's the product when it walks in the door? Right, that's the difference, right? So um, the freshman that walks in at Ohio State is at a different level than the freshman that walks in other many other places in the country, no matter where it is. Now the development when they're here, absolutely. And that, you better get up to speed fast, right? Because that's real when it's spring ball or it's a match drill and you're one-on-one -on -one against from, you know, that type of challenge across from you. You know, most of those guys haven't been up against a guy like themselves in their entire life. So the development when you're here, there's no doubt about that. You know, it's just what's the starting point's a little bit different. Matt, along those lines, coming in here the second time, but you know how this all works. Where do you think this defense, specifically the secondary, can take a jump or another step forward this year? Because let's face it, they were very good last year. Absolutely. So where can they get better this year? Absolutely. It's a, um, I would say uh, playing as one playing as one. I mean, you're talking about number one pass defense in the country right now, right? So the expectation is that and to be the best in America. BIA is as we say, right? So, but I would say playing as one heartbeat across the board, whether that's in our run fits together and our disguises together being coordinated. I think, I think having that and working hand in hand with Tim and, you know, making sure that um, our guys are functioning at the absolute highest level. Yeah, obviously, you're walking into a pretty good situation. Okay. okay. And you got two of the best safeties in the country. Number one defense, number one pass defense, all that stuff. But the last person that was in this job we didn't, isn't here, and part of that is because of what happens out of this building, right? Recruiting. So where, where do you feel like you excel in that space? What makes you comfortable in that? Space? How do you yeah. sell it? Because you know a lot of guys may not know who you are. Yet. For sure, yeah. It starts with relationships, right? I mean, I, I'm not trying to give you a runaround answer. It's, it's okay. Hey, who is that individual? Who is that family? Who are the people that are important? You know, from there, and then who am I, right? What have I been able to do throughout my career, and what is this place? You know, so I think it's a wholesale approach. It's being able to show that individual where are they right now, what are they going to be able to do short term and long term, and why Ohio State's the best option to be able to do that from there. But um, it's the time that you put in, right? And it's being able to build that real authentic relationship, and be able to sell Ohio State throughout that process. What did you learn about Matt Guerrero in the last year that you were away from here? Mm, good question. What did I learn about myself? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, like I, I pride, I talk about Jim Knowles a lot, ability to adapt. I mean, you're forced to adapt when you go different places, right? So Tulsa, to Tulsa, to, to Indiana, to, you know, and, and you're forced to adapt in that process, right? So you're learning, you know, like I, I tell people the world, when you're at Ohio State, you have relationships here, right? At Tulsa, I met with every single defensive player one-on-one. -on -one. You build that relationship. We have four defensive installs already done there. You're off the road recruiting, and you're in a new place, and you don't know anybody, you know? So you're forced to adapt in that situation, right? And, and uh I had been at Duke for 10 years, you know, one place, you know, and then you're at Ohio State, Tulsa, Indiana within one year, you know, from that. And um, so, yeah, your ability to adapt, so I would say that's something that I hadn't had to do before. I knew I could do it, but forced to do it in that situation. How different was this last month walking into high schools, wearing yeah. that on your chest as opposed to not, not to knock any other schools, but it's different, right? You receive different when you walk in the room. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the blocko carries a lot of weight. We know that. The recruits know that. And that's, that's why we're sitting here. Man, uh, you probably, probably already been out. I've been over here listening to James Laurinaitis. But uh, Caleb Downs, when you watch him on video, do, do you already have a preconceived notion 
of what he brings to the play. Mm -hmm. And how do you get past that in like spring ball, et cetera? You understand what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, so you see you see the talent on the field. You see the playmaking production over 100 tackles as a freshman. Yeah. You see all of that. Um, then it's having him articulate what is he looking at, right? What's the call? What's your job responsibility? Which he could do at a high level. And then from there, it's fine-tuning. Okay, here's how we do it within our system and be able to teach him that and then be able to try to take him to the next step from there, you know? Yeah, and if you notice, has he, has he been very diligent in learning your system oh, so yeah. far? I mean, oh, yeah. how, how's that shown up? A lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time. He puts the time in. He's early in the building. He's late to leave. He's put a lot of time in. He knows that he had a short window to be able to learn that, to be able to produce the way that he wants in the spring. So he's put a, a bunch of time in with myself and Tim. And, uh, yeah, I've been really – he's like a sponge. I mean, yeah. he's really impressive. And one thing from him uh, is – I look at him. I look at him as one of the maybe the top safeties in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at it. But how do you how do you keep that in mind? But also bring these other guys along. I mean, to know that there there's competition there. Oh yeah. Not somebody is just gonna be plug and play. No, you coach everybody the same. You know, no matter what the name of the jersey number is. So you know how what motivates that guy. That may be a little bit different from person to person. Yeah. Uh, as you you know build your relationship. But each guy, you're critiquing the player that's on the film and you've been able to show them, hey, here's how I can be able to make you better. Here's what we need you to do in this situation. Um, so yeah, no matter who it is, whether it's Caleb or, or anybody else, we're going to develop every single guy at a high level. Now, what was the season nice opener question. like last year facing Ohio yeah. State? How fun was that to go up with Tom and try to figure out a plan? And then uh, did you think the gym was going to respond well to the triple option? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. How fun is it to defend all those guys? I don't know if that's considered <laughs> fun or not, but no, it was, uh, it was great. You know, um, you know, if you go back a number of years ago, in 2019, we opened with Alabama when I was at Duke. Tua was the quarterback. Najee Harris was the running back. That was Judy, Ruggs, Devontae Smith, and Waddle. Nobody even talked about Waddle. So we had 10 personnel. That was the four wide. So I have some experience with defending explosive playmakers, right? And um, when you say, okay, I've obviously been here, and, and uh, I was not going to let Marvin Harrison or Mecca. I know Marvin caught the one down the side. Unfortunately, he stepped out of bounds. But we weren't going to let those guys be able to get easy chunk plays against us, you know. So I didn't know what they were going to do. Opening opening game, right, you have a lot of camp rules going into those games. Um, so, yeah, you put your system in place. But obviously having familiarity of how talented the guys were, uh, you try to put a system in place to be able to limit those guys, you know. So obviously it wasn't enough. But, um Probably gave you guys a couple things to be able to talk about it. You know? So, um, but uh, yeah, and then you talk about triple option. Yeah, I was I, I was telling some of these guys beforehand. Uh, you know, I'm saying what's up to Jim and the guys pregame or whatever, and I'm just holding back. I said I can't wait until you got to adjust to all this. You know, because I had obviously gone against it all camp. But no, it's it's great to be able to compete against those guys. But yeah, once toe hits leather, all that friend stuff goes out the window. It's about competing and putting your guys in, in position to win. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it.